Hello my friends, Ken Berry here at OB Farms. I've got a big announcement to make today and also a, some really interesting video for you in this. Um, I told you a few months back that I was having trouble with the sheep poop not disappearing. So this is sheep poop that's at least six months old. That's just laying here, not going anywhere. And I've been reading about this, trying to figure out what to do about it. And I came to the conclusion that I need some dung beetles. In the South, we call them tumble bugs. Now, this is a fresh pat from the spring flush. They're a little bit loose. There's some packed, but still a little too loose. But these guys, this poop is not going anywhere. And so I looked into this, and I found a company that you can actually buy tumble bugs from. And so I have bought some tumble bugs, and in this video, I'm going to release them and let you check them out. Now, that's, that's from at least three to six months ago. And they, they were just in here. I just moved them. And so that's fresh. But that's not fresh. That's been there for a long time, and it's like it won't go away. So I bought some tumble bugs, and doing the research for this, I think you're going to be quite surprised at all the benefits of having tumble bugs. Now, you may ask, why don't you have tumble bugs? You're in Tennessee. You should have you should have dung beetles. Well, you're right. I remember growing up on my grandfather's farm. There's a big brush pile I made. Growing up when I was a little kid, we always bought two heifers because granddaddy had maybe 10 acres of pasture and he would fatten them up and then we'd send them to the processor. Well, I remember watching the tumble bugs move big balls of cow poop I didn't know where they were taking them. I didn't know it was a big deal, but I remember that. And I've been doing this for two years now on this farm, and I haven't seen a single tumble bug. But I have seen piles of uh, nutrient-filled poop just lay there, not go anywhere. So I got to thinking, well, wh why haven't I been recolonized with tumble bugs? And I think it's because within one or two miles in any direction here, there's no sheep. There's no cattle. There's one farm way back over there that has cattle, but I guarantee you he's constantly worming the cattle and putting uh, insecticides, fungicides, and that makes it inhospitable for dung beetles. And so I had to order some dung beetles because all this nutrition needs to be under the ground. And so the tumble bugs, there's nowhere for them to come from. There's the, probably the nearest infestation of tumble bugs is 10 or 15 miles from here. So I'm never going to get tumble bugs. So I had to buy some. They were expensive. I didn't like it a bit. But I think now that I've looked into tumble bugs, dung beetles, and what they actually do for the soil, for the grass, for the farm, which I'm about to tell you a few very interesting details, and then I'll show you the tumble bugs going free on OB Farms. So it turns out that dung beetles are very interesting very fascinating there are multiple species some are tunnelers some are rollers and some are dwellers some live in the poop some make a deep tunnel and push the poop down in there and some are rollers they just roll the poop to their den uh, and there's actually tons of research about dung beetles there are actually guys whose phd is in dung beetles like that's their entire career at the college where they're practicing uh, being a professor. They are the expert on poop bugs. Not kidding. But the, the research is fascinating. There so, so there's currently a, a need to restore dung beetles because there's so much pesticide, herbicide, fungicide. Everybody worms their cows and sheep constantly. When that goes into their digestive system, they're going to poop out some percentage of that. And that, that insecticide, that pesticide, fungicide, all that stuff is in the poop. And so when the dung beetles try to eat it, it either kills them or it reduces their ability to reproduce. And so dung beetles are, they're not endangered, but I mean, they're in trouble. They need our help. And so the dung beetle does so many different things on the farm it's it's a little bit crazy uh no wonder i've got poop laying in the pasture over there that's six nine months old 
because there's really nothing else that can utilize the nutrition in that poop and get it under the soil where it can actually benefit the soil than dung beetles. They're the, really the only species that can do that. Now, there's lots of bacteria and fungus and stuff that'll get in the poop and, and digest it, but it's really not making the full use of it. So I'm so glad that I invested in these dung beetles. I hope they make it and reproduce. Um, I've, I've got a, I'll show you the company that I bought them from. They're expensive, but I feel like they may be worth it in the long run. There are so many ways that they help your farm, help the grass, help the soil, and therefore help your livestock eventually that it's a little bit crazy. I've actually included some of the research links down in the show notes below. If you're, if you're a dung beetle nerd like me and you're like, what? Seriously, no way. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's very fascinating. One of the articles I linked to down in the show notes actually has plans. You can make your own dung beetle life cycle viewing chamber in case one of your little ones wants to grow up and be a dung beetle professor. Uh, as you can see in the video, Bonnie Blue uh, really loved the dung beetles. She wanted to play with them much more than I wanted her to. Uh, Beckett liked them, but he had a healthy respect for them. He didn't want to mess with them too much. And so I'm very excited to see if these dung beetles are able to live and reproduce here on the farm. I hope so, since I already spent the money. But I would, if you don't have dung beetles and you have cattle, sheep, some other ruminant animal uh, that you're ranching, I would look into it. And hopefully you've got enough local ranchers that don't just douse everything in herbicide, pesticide, fungicide, that that you can have your dung beetles for free because that's how it should be but if you don't have a farm close by that doesn't worm all their animals to death uh, then you may not have access you may have to buy them just like i did i don't know if it's going to be worth the money but if they do form colonies here and actually reproduce every year and then i've got a permanent infestation of dung beetles it'll be well worth it for the benefit that they'll do for the soil the grass and then the animals eventually so just to go through some of the many benefits of having dung beetles on your ranch, first of all, they break down the manure. And so the manure, although it seems like it's waste, it's actually very nutrient dense if it's in the right place. They break it down and they get it off the pasture. Uh, I, I've read reports in some of these articles where a humongous cow pie, right, a big one, is completely gone in three days if there's a good supply of dung beetles on the farm. And so any rancher knows that a, a sheep, a cow, they won't eat near the poop of their own species. And so if a cow poops or a sheep poops, even though there's delicious, wonderful grass one or two feet away from that, they won't eat that because there's poop there. And so the dung beetles are gonna clear the pasture quicker of the dung so that they'll be able to take advantage of all the grass, even grass that used to be by a pile of poop that's no longer a pile of poop because the dung beetles buried it. Uh, they control all, they actually can cut down on the worm count in your sheep for sure and probably even cows as well. And, and then also horn flies in cows as well. They cut down up to 95% because the larvae, the eggs for all those parasites are in the poop. And so when they get in there really quickly, dry the poop out, break it apart, take it and roll it or bury it or whatever they do with it, that's no longer a Petri dish for all these different uh, uh, parasites to grow. And so it, it basically disrupts the reproductive cycle of the parasites. Right, exactly. And so the more dung beetles you have, the less you have to worm. So they're basically taking the, the, the poop that's laying on top of the, the grass, they're getting rid of that, but they're burying it underneath the ground. So the grass's roots are actually gonna have access to that dung now instead of it laying on top of the grass. And so that's gonna introduce an entire another level of nutrition to the grass roots. And so I give my sheep mineral which is good, but you know, they don't keep 100% of that. They poop out 30 or 40% of that, that mineral. Well, it's in the poop, right? Now the dung beetles are going to take that. They're going to bury it in the ground. Now the grass has access to all that mineral 
that I thought I was wasting in the sheep's poop. It's no longer wasted. It's going back in to feed the grass. And now grass that grows on OB farms in the future is going to be much more mineral dense because the minerals got to the roots and the grass was able to utilize the minerals that it needs. They, the ones that are tunnelers that dig holes to put their little poop ball down in, that aerates the soil. It actually causes, makes a little uh, tunnel. And so when it rains, that water is able to get much, much deeper into the soil. It, it lowers runoff. And so you can imagine if you had an acre pasture and you had 500 dung beetle holes in it, that's going to capture and retain a lot more moisture from that rain than if all that rain just ran off into the ditch. Now keep in mind that dung beetles only eat the poop of mammals, really only ruminants. That's their favorite. So cattle, sheep, goat, bison, uh, and other ruminant animals, that's the poop that they really like. And so if you, if you just have a garden or you have, you know, you don't have animals, livestock grazing on your farm, then definitely don't waste the money for dung beetles. They'll probably help the farm in some ways, but it's not going to give you the financial payback as it would as if, if you were uh, grazing ruminants on your land. Uh, but the more I look into the dung beetle situation, the more I'm more happy I am that I spent the money. And uh, so now let's, let's watch the video of me and Beckett and Bonnie releasing the dung beetles into the wild. Come on, let's go. I think these dung beetles are hungry. We have to hurry because they're gonna die. Do you know why we're putting dung beetles on the farm? Mama. Mama. Why? So they can eat the poop why? and then they'll also bury the poop under the ground and that helps fertilize the grass. And the holes they dig when it rains, the rain will go down in the hole and that'll water the grass. Isn't that cool? So very yucky. <laughs> yeah, I'm glad we don't have to eat poop. I'm glad there's beetles for that. <gasps> Never no. touch the that kind of fence. That's right. Don't touch the fence. Don't touch the fence, Bonnie. Be careful. Mom, whenever you see her finger, don't touch it. <laughs> I think it's your little sheepy. Let me see your box. Okay. Here's the box. I'll open it up. Did you get this all? Stop. Stop. How do you get it all? All right. There's your box. I oh, know it. They're ready to move. Pour them right here so Mama can see them good. And Bonnie. Oh, They're free. Oh, they are. Look at him crawling. Look at him crawling. Look at that little dung beetle crawling. Oh, there's lots of different kinds in there. Oh, there's a carrot. See, there's a little guy. What's he doing? He's... Look, this is my favorite. Look at this guy. Yep. Look at that horn. Wow. He's the boss. He's the boss? Why? Because he's got a, the biggest horn, of course. All right, let's see. Take All right, all guys, in. go free and eat poop. Oh, well, there's another one to hold. Can I hold him? Yeah. <coughs> I think there's four or five different species. Some like to be in open pasture. Some like to be in uh, more wooded conditions. See, that's a completely different kind right there. See him? Oh, there's the Billy. I mean the ram. He's like, what are you guys up to? There we go, Bonnie. Good job. Good job. <laughs> he tried to pinch me with he tried to pinch with me with his horn. He tried to pinch me with his horn. He tried to pinch me with his horn. Alright. Bonnie, put that beetle down. Let him go. She loves beetles. She is not afraid at all. Whoa. Now look, look at his butt. They can smell the poop, and so they'll just find the poop and eat it up. And they'll start digging burrows and laying eggs. Oh, look, they're, he's making a burrow yep, right now. See, he's going in the ground. Why? 
He hasn't found poop yet. He hasn't found any poop yet. Nope, they're looking. <clears throat> touchy, touch. Okay, look After they find some poop and eat it, then they'll have lots of strength, and then they'll start making dung beetle babies, laying eggs. All right, watch out. Don't step on any. Back away. All right. All right. Good job, boys. No. Man. I think I see a little sheep poop over here. I just love watching those kids out on the farm. It makes my heart so happy to know that they're going to grow up understanding how a farm works, where food actually comes from, the circle of life, which also includes death. They get to learn all that stuff from a very early age. Uh, didn't you love Bonnie playing with the, the poop bug? I had to tell her to put it down. Uh, so... Again, very fascinating. Dung beetles are just one of the many casualties of the way we've been farming and ranching for the last 50, 75 years. In order to get our pastures, to get our ranches, to get our silvo pasture back into the condition that it once was when bison roamed by the billions, by the millions, and their grass came up to the top of the, the horse's saddle as you were riding through the, the prairie or the grassland. In order to ever get that back, we're going to have to go back as closely as we can to the way we used to do things. And dung beetles are a part of that equation. This is Dr. Barry. I'll see you next time.